Let's talk about these American alligators over here, you know, Snaggletooth and... I dare. Oh yeah, can you imagine? What happens if there's no, if the croc doesn't go in the water at night? Have you ever had that happen? I had actually put one years ago out of the water, and yes, I gave it mouth to nose. Resuscitation, some warm air going in his nares. The reality is, guys, this extreme South Florida is the extreme northern limit of their range. The American crocodile here has been with Fred for how long, man? I've had this in nearly 30 years. No way. 40 years, guys. I love this habitat because this is so much like what these animals live in in the wild. And I wanted to do this video because it's been a while since we learned about how Fred works with the animals in the cold. I thought it would be a good idea to show you some of the crocodilians in the cold. Yeah. Very cool stuff. What's going on everyone? As you can see, I'm hanging out with my buddy Fred. It's been a little while, so I wanted to come over and see how everything's going, man. It's been cold and he's just kind of letting some animals out. That's uh, I mean, yeah, I am. Let's feel them, yeah. Oh my God, look at how big they got. Hey. They are just awesome, man. It's been a long time since I've seen a galop that small. This is just how my buddy Socrates started out and they're nice and warm. This yeah, is a six, really cool... Yeah, uh, 16 mented. Okay. Awesome. That is really cool, man. They look beautiful, Fred. Fantastic. Yeah, they, uh, tonight, I may have to bring them in, but they do have electric heater. This and, really uh, yeah. Room. I was just going to say, I mean, it's a very simple design. It's like a 55-gallon plastic drum. Right, and I just have the, the reptile here Let's in, inside. See Let's see that. It's, um... Uh, oh, right really here. Cool. Yeah. Right. And, you know, they're not really there, some of that waterproof, but not completely. So right. But the fact the that this is black is also a good deal. Right. And, and the pad actually stays off of the ground about an inch. Okay. Cool. And these guys know to get up on it. That is awesome. And I let them out when they're ready. Yeah. Very good. And, um... It's cool to see how other people uh, handle the cold weather down here, you know? And, and get ideas. And at night, I do cover them with this in here. So you'll do another walk around later and pull everybody in. Right. We were just talking about it. This time of year, I can't stand it, man. It, it, this is been rough. Yeah. But the sun shined like today. Yep. I had to put the lizards out. Absolutely, Let man. Let me enjoy it. Well, let's, let's talk about these American alligators over here. You know, Snaggletooth and uh, what's his girlfriend's name? That's Dale. Oh, yeah. Well, these guys take it. They do very well, but you still run the water in their enclosure. All of my ponds have well water right. that averages probably between 72 and 74 degrees year round. Right on. And these guys uh, with that nice black skin, um, they're just going to take in, even though it's about maybe 68 degrees right now. If I were to put a temp gun on them right now, I guarantee you they would probably be 85 to 90 yep. degrees. I've done that with my black Aldabras and even his Galops. The Galops have that nice dark black, uh, black shell. Now here's one of the Niles. Um, it's funny, as soon as they can, they'll get out and get as much sun as they can get. And it's fun, uh, you know, same thing with like Slinky. I'll have Slinky, um, I'll open the doors, let him come out. Even though it's in the 60s, his, his body temperature is much, much higher. So it's, it's real evident on the darker animals. Right. Uh, the tiger, uh, lizards, the alligators, the gelops, and, and the animals that need to absorb heat. Yep. And um, it's really amazing. Yeah, that is cool, man. It's just, I, you know, I get stressed out with the amount of animals I have at my house, but most of my animals, with the exception of the croc monitor, Lagatha, are fairly easy for me to get into their enclosures. Of course, the galops are hard, but can you imagine what happens if there's no, if the croc doesn't go in the water at night? Have you ever had that happen? Actually, they... actually no. These animals cool. know they're pretty smart. And not only do they go into the water, they actually go to the source of the, the pump. Awesome. Right so the, the outlet. Water, and they will sit right there in that flow. That's cool. And they'll do it. So that's it, really um, cool. It's uh, on purpose. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, look, I didn't even notice. That's the acutus? This is the acutus, huh? Yeah. Let me just reach over here and get a shot. What? You guys can see. What? So this is an American. That's also 
his deaf what? dog. <laughs> that's an Australian what? cattle what? dog, right? Uh, the, the blue heel. Oh, that's it. The yeah, blue heel. All right. Yeah, and what? I don't think she's it's missed a meal. My, what? What? You got it. Bad well, ever. so the uh, American crocodile here has been with Fred for how long, man? I've had this him nearly 30 years. 40 years. 30, yeah. No what? way. 40 years, guys. So what? I remember. Okay. <laughs> well, what's funny is many, many years ago, um, we did a video. One of our first videos ever was collecting eggs out of here. And remember when she charged and I jumped, I, I stood up on top of the fence, I got out and Fred was making fun of me. I think that was, gosh, 2009, maybe? It was a while back. That was, but you know, what the cool thing about the American crocodile is she's a pretty hardy animal being from South Florida anyway. They, in, in, their historical range, I believe that their range went all the way up the east coast of Florida to perhaps Vero Beach they've been found. They have been found all the way as far as Vero Foot Pierce. Um, I know way back in the day, I actually know people who sighted them more than one in the wild that far north. Wow, that's incredible. Now, were they just kind of blown along there? Did they ride the currents and get washed up? I don't know, but they've been found with some frequency in historic, you know, historically uh, that far north. So that means that they can take a cooler temperature. But the, the reality is, guys, is that this extreme South Florida is the extreme northern limit of their range. And there is that possibility that since we have the Gulf Stream that runs north, um, we do have animals that are hybridized with Cubans that have rushed to shore wow. here and further north. So okay. that is another possibility. Sometimes without DNA testing, by just the list of them, you would just immediately um, accept the fact that it was American and gotcha. possibly it was a hybrid. It, that's possible, yeah, because where we are on the peninsula of Florida, the Gulf, Co the Gulf Stream uh, flows the closest to us. So um, you get, it's a giant conveyor belt. I mean, remember watching Finding Nemo? The sea turtles would just ride the currents, dude. And uh, right, animals right. ride the currents and they, they colonize, they go new places. And if the environment is agreeable to them, that's how they can get a stronghold or a foothold rather uh, to a new area. Now we're kind of cruising around back. And I wanted to do this video because it's been a while um, since we learned about how Fred works with the animals in the cold. I thought it would be a good idea to show you some of the crocodilians in the cold. Yeah. But right. all these ponds are feeding into each other. Right, and that, that bamboo, and now this pump is on the timer. Yep. It's off right now. Okay. But that bamboo pipe feeds water into here. Yep. That in turn feeds water into here. Into here. Awesome. And um, this is where the um, moose site came in there. And now, yep, they're in the water. There we go. That's a female right there. And that is awesome. I love this. Excuse me, there's a female, and that's the male. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I didn't even see her. So there's the male. You guys can just make, you can make them out there. All right, so there's the male, but I didn't even notice. But here's the gal. And you see, she's sitting right in the overflow with a warm water. Is. Right. Well, there's the female, and the male is sitting right there. And you guys see how the water will, when it kicks on, it trickles down and into this area. So very, very cool. I love this habitat because this is so much like what these animals live in in the wild. Just hey. little forest pools. But I would worry sometimes. They're smart, though, you're saying, because I would worry that they're so terrestrial. Do you think they would kind of get out and wander at some point? And do you come out in the middle of the night and check? Do you? I do come out almost every night. And yes, they are um, not only nocturnal, but they are very terrestrial. Okay. And I do find them walking around. I also find that the dwarf caiman, not this one, this is the trillion out of the smooth front. Okay. But the Pedalus hitchus papyrosus can climb very well. No way. At night. I have seen mine all the way at the top. What? Of this type of an enclosure? Well, a smaller wire with a, a top 
Okay. I mean, I say I find it. Hey, we're talking about Lucifer. Yes. Oh man, maybe we'll go over there and have yeah. a look at him because um, uh, that that animal started out with me, right? Went to Gatorama, right? And now is now with you. Too, yeah. yeah, that's awesome, man. And uh, I may have a thing that's coming. Get out of here! That's awesome. And the other cool thing is, is that animal has become fairly handleable. At times, yeah. Oh, at times. Okay. Well, there's a reason I called him Lucifer. I actually have video um, of that animal when it was a hatchling, uh, just giving me all, giving me a what for, just like a little guy just going to but, town. I mean, uh, they're nuts. One thing I noticed about the Pedicitrus group, okay, is when they're young, they really do not like being messed with, okay. at least in my experience. But as they grow older, they both seem to mellow. Okay. Even these guys. Right, right. Um, and that's perhaps, you know, that's true of certain monitors I've noticed. Um, they Maybe they feel a little bit more confident with their size or the fact that you've been around them so long they realize that you're not a threat to them. I think that has a lot to, to do with it. it. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. And as you said, they are very smart. So, um, you know, hey, I love it. Yeah. Uh, all right. So the turtles. I have a major flow that comes directly from the pump feed this, which feeds this, which, which feeds, feeds the caiman. Wow. And that's it's, 70 foot degree water. And so there's not fact, much of a... Um, it, it was it hers feels last warm. night. You yeah. feel that's, that's a probably 75 degrees right there. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And so you don't get a lot of temperature loss, do you think, from the little waterfalls and stuff, no? Uh, the air temp, I'm not sure how it affects it that much, but as far as water temp, Okay. no issue. Cool. All right, there you go. Uh, it's been working well, man. And you've been in this house for over 40 years, haven't you? Right, right. Yeah, so things tend to be going well. Uh, um, that's awesome. He's got yeah, some stuff to go. So, yeah, so that's how you're keeping everything similar to uh, what I do. Yeah. Uh, he's just doing it with crocodiles and turtles. Um, so, very cool stuff. But before we sign off, let's have a little wander and we're going to go over to show you guys Lucifer. It's been a little while. Um, that's interesting stuff that he was able to climb to such a degree. I got to see, I got to uh, show you guys that the enclosure. first time I saw him do it, I happened to be home. Okay. And he actually crawled over and out of his enclosure. And that was the last time. Yeah, because that's so what prompted I, you I making a roof. I move him into an enclosure with a lid. Gotcha. Here's a snapping turtle. I don't know if you guys can make out the snapping turtle head in there. Can you guys see it? I hope you can. Yeah, that felt like a crocodile that was in here. It's yeah. Gatorland. At Gatorland, yes. And so I'm, I had this whole pen to maybe move some, one of my animals that doesn't have such a big area. Okay. Yeah, put him here for that. Why not? In place, with all this room. Wow, that's so cool, man. I can't wait to get my uh, croc stuff built. That's going to be exciting. Yeah, it, and it, um, you're able to create new stuff. And uh, thank goodness that you had the opportunity to do it right the first time. Right. And man, that I wish I had. <laughs> well, yeah, it's funny because even with the crocs, I'll be starting right at the beginning. I'm sure I'm going to learn a bunch of stuff. You guys are oh. in the sun. Look at that. They tend to do okay with the cooler temps. I mean, they don't want Much it. better than you would think. Right, yeah. they're hardy. They're hardy. And they are, you know, fairly close to Caribbean islands that they're from, or kind of close. So as long as they can warm their bodies up every morning, you know, I've seen them go down to, into the 40s. Of course, we have heaters, but every once in a while, things go astray. In fact, I was just over at Crutchfield's house and told him what happened to Slinky. And he told me that he had some Lewis eye, like, Back in the day when you were able to have pure Lewis eye, right. um, their heaters went out and his brother was with him. They came out the next morning, all the lizards appeared dead. Um, so Tom just kind of laid them out, put them in the sun. His brother comes running in saying, hey man, one of your lizards is moving. So it's a similar situation uh, to what happened with our buddy Slinky. I, I have seen that with Cayman. Okay. And uh, right, I actually pulled one years ago out of the water and yes, I gave it mouth to nose 
resuscitation. Some warm air going in his nares. And you know what? He had. Uh, he made it. He threw it out. <laughs> so here's Lucifer's hangout. Let's see if he's uh, there today. All right. But I'm really excited. I mean, this is an animal that, like I said, started out with me. And uh, here he is now with my good buddy, Fred. And also the Mata Mata is now with Fred. Uh, the Mata Mata yeah. that I gave to my buddy Chad now came over here and they paired it up. Oh, look at that and beauty. He's moving into right here. You see he's right in the room right over there? Right, right. There you go. Thank you. Now I don't, you know, you don't have to do anything you don't feel like doing today, buddy. I just wanted to show people this animal. Um, now what do you think? Is this animal full grown? It's not quite full grown. However, I would say that it is uh, a breeding size. Okay. Do we know if it's male or female? It is a male. Oh, wow. Okay. So the males are going to get a little bit bigger, correct? Right. Wow, that's a beauty. That is such a cool little crocodilian, man. And I have seen some that are probably five feet. Five foot. Okay. So that would be on the big end, though. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Very, very cool little critter, man. Um, but again, look at this enclosure, huh? So he had to build a really cool yes, uh, screen yes. top. And it just shows you that these animals uh, can do more. They're more athletic than you think. And it would make sense that this particular crocodilian would have to climb since it wanders over land a bit. And uh, there are some kind of rocky regions in Central, uh, excuse me, in South America where the animals are found. So uh, very, very important. Hey. Your gators, I've seen gators tail walk over a four or five foot fence. I have seen that. My fences are all six foot. Right. I have not had any of mine do it. Maybe they're too heavy. Yeah, definitely. But, um, they're they're well-fed, happy critters. In the in the breeding season, um, they do a lot of traveling. Okay. They also have to pine drives up. Okay. And if they come across a fence that is only four foot. Yeah. Chances are they're going, they're going over it and right into someone's swimming pool, which but is usually it's in that third to seven foot range. Gotcha. Okay. And if it's bigger than that, it's too it's heavy. It's not going to do it. If it's smaller than that, it probably has not learned how to do it yet. Awesome, man. Well, all right. I just wanted to say what's up to Fred. Um, always fun to be here with our buddy. We'll probably do another video here in a minute with our good friend Fred. Uh, so stay tuned to the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, Just enjoy these beautiful animals will you and in the comments below let Fred know you appreciate him He is Chandler's grandfather after all Just kidding. Hey Chandler. I'm at grandpa's house. See you guys hey, <laughs> Love you, man. <laughs> See you guys